Hello everybody. Welcome to today's live watercolor session. I'm Sarah Giese and I'm an artist and a mom and a wife and I'm here to just remind you that you are creative, that you have beauty inside you that you want to have come out. So welcome to this session and thank you for joining me. Um, we just kind of decided to make these sessions kind of on the spur of the moment a couple weeks ago. Um, because of what's going on in the world, because there's craziness, we want to um, bring some beauty into the world. So this is our offering to you. Um, hopefully you'll be able to um, share this beauty with others. You'll be able to put it in, um, in the sight of other people and make them feel something. Today we're going to do a watercolor of an Easter lily. So, <laughs> kind of fitting. We were thinking we would do tulips, but Easter lilies, this is the time, right? So we'll be here for about one hour. We're going to do, um, we'll need watercolor paper, watercolor paints, and a brush. Uh, if you have a water, um, a paint pen, a white paint pen, you can use that as well. So let's get started. We're just going to jump right in today. All right. So if you have already made your template, you need to um, copy this on your copier or on a window or with graphite paper, somehow getting that on your watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, use the thickest paper you have. Um, if you have these kind, my kind of watercolor paints, that's great. If you have liquid ones, that's great. If you have this kind, it's great too. These are perfectly fine. When we decided to um, share this uh, these watercolor sessions, we thought, well, how could we do that? I usually use acrylic paint. Um, I'm in my art, uh, some oil, but not everybody has acrylic paint at home sitting around in their stash, but watercolors, a lot of people have these. So we thought, well, let's just do that. Use what people have in their house. So that's how it went about. So if you have that, Great. The colors we're going to use today are green, one color green, a yellow, very little bit of yellow, and some purple. On the outline here, I did put a little bit of blue, just a hint of blue. Since this is a white flower, I wanted it to kind of show up a little more than just on the white paper. So green, purple, yellow, blue, and maybe a little bit of orange in there for the little pistols. Okay, so that's what you'll need. As we get started, you'll need some clean water and a pretty normal, regular size brush. This is a number four. We're not going to go crazy or anything with fine details at this point. All right, so let's start on this green. Before we start, we always need to look at the painting, don't we? We're going to start on this painting with this green part, with the stem and the leaves. Like I said, that's just one color green. It's a dark green. If you have a dark green, that works best. That way you can add water to it and it'll be lighter um, for the contrast, okay? So we'll notice that the shadows are along the outside edge. This is, see how the, the darker color is all along the side, outside edge and it's lighter as it goes this way. That gives it a rounded look, shows that it's three dimensional, all right? So we're just going to start with that. Then we'll go on to the flower. And really, the flower is made up of shadows. Because it's white, we, we're going to use this purple color to show some shadow and give it some, um, some shape. All right. Also, we'll have a little bit of green kind of outlining the little veins of the flower. But really, truly, we'll have a little bit of purple in there to, to help make the shapes. OK, let's start with the green. All right. For those green leaves, we're going to go straight in with a dark green on a dry piece of paper. If you have, there's many different kinds of green. This is kind of like a hunter green. It's not a blue green, but it's not a yellow green. It's a deep hunter green, okay? so. I'm going to go along the outside edge of this little tubular thing here. Of all the green, this is going to be the lightest part. I think it's one of the little um, 
buds, it's going to turn into one of these flowers. But on the pictures I saw, they were still light green. They were green. So I'm going to go in and pull the water down and allow that to pool and be a lightish green color. Okay. But as we go down, we're going to have these, this area darker than this side. So we'll just pull this dark green all along and as well on the bottom of the leaves is where the shadow would be. So we're going to go along the bottom of the leaves. There's one hiding back here. It's kind of extra in the shadows. We'll make that whole thing dark. And here's another stem. We'll put darkness along that outside edge and along the bottoms of all these leaves. This painting actually looks quite complicated and it's not. It's really quite simple. So don't be overwhelmed. Don't go into it thinking, ooh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know. I've been painting for a long time and I still feel that way every time I start something. So I'm just telling you, if you are feeling that, it's not, it's not something that's going to last. Just let it come and let it go. <laughs> okay. okay, along this edge here. Yeah, those feelings are real, but... You just let them go, come through. All right, so at this point I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go back in with water and pull that water, uh, pull that paint up into the rest of the leaves while it's still kind of wet, okay? I don't want it to dry fully or it's a little bit hard to move the paint. So we'll go down farther on the stem in a minute. But for now, let's work in this water on the stem and the leaves. Happy Good Friday, everybody. <laughs> does not feel like it's Easter weekend, does it? It's not quite the same as usual, for sure. But how are you guys spending that weekend? Are you having new, any new ideas about how you, we can celebrate. We're just kind of expecting to be with our family. <laughs> I think my husband will cook some yummy food up. Pulling up that color up into the rest of the leaves. Just like that. All right. Watercolor always dries lighter than it goes on, so we'll let it dry and see what happens. And if we need to add more color, we will and after it dries for another layer, okay? All right, continuing down. This leaf needs some water. Okay, so I'm gonna continue down this, this stem here. I'm gonna go around this part because this, this little guy is a is a white petal. We don't want to put the green there. Now this area right here is the darkest part of the stem. And I'm not going to be able to make it dark enough at this point because it's still wet and it's the first layer. We'll go back in. But that definitely, this, this leaf right here kind of comes up and out, so there's a real deep um, shadow in there that we want to portray. That way we can have it feel like it's 3D. So all in here, there it is kind of go it's going in there. We're going to add some darkness to that whole area right there. And let it just blend up in. Okay. You may have to go back in in a minute for more of that, but we'll continue down, down the plant here, doing that same technique. Darker paint along the outside edge and the bottom.
go. Continuing down. Now this part of the leaf here is going to be darkest. This is going to be light. So we'll go in with a lot of paint on my brush and just let that be dark on this side. Now on it on these holiday weekends it makes you think about the people who are shut in and alone you know my grandma she's in her 90s and she's she's staying in for good reasons um, so my my mom and her sister are gonna go over to the to her apartment and um, park in the parking lot she's gonna come out on her balcony for a little bit for Easter <laughs> that's one way to do it right but I know there's some people who are just alone or in dangerous positions you know I have uh, I work with a a group called for her and it's all about um, empowering women um, especially who are in um, dangerous positions or you know compromised positions and I know they're doing a lot of um, just outreach helping helping women who are in dangerous positions that not safe in their homes you know so especially over this weekend I'm just praying that they, there would be peace and as well like that there's helpers and people are willing to bring food when it needs to be brought and safety when it needs to be acquired and you know assured so shout out to for her you guys rock I know they're taking donations and stuff so if, I'm gonna leave a link there if you um, would like to look it up. It's in San Antonio, um, but yeah, any anything like that, you know, that people are who are trying to do good in the world, um, especially during these rough times, just do what you can, right? Okay. All right. So this leaf here, this whole area is dark because it's folded in. This part I'm gonna let be light. That way it'll show that it's a fold and this is the bottom of the leaf being shown. Okay. You wanna have a good um, delineation of that color there. Okay. All right, we have our first layer of most of these leaves continuing up here. And we'll have to go in and do another layer to just darken up some of those shadow areas. Okay. And these here are, are green leaves as well, so we'll go in and do the same. Dark along the bottom. And this is kind of like a marker, you know? This is like a stark line. These are all stark lines. So that's why we're going in on dry paper. And then we add water to pull that up. Okay, staying away from those petals so we don't have Green seeping in. Be careful for that water. Okay, and back down here.
kind of nice, me, me as an extrovert. At least I get to, I was telling my mom today, she's saying my, my dad is an extrovert as well and he's a little star crazy right now. <laughs> it's getting to that point, right? Where you're like, okay, now this is a little crazy. <laughs> and um, I told her, well, I feel the same way, but at least I get to talk to, have a one-way conversation with strangers <laughs> once a day. So I told her, hey, maybe dad should be, start his own YouTube channel. He could be like, you know, I don't know, the answer man or something. <laughs> People could, he, he's, he's good at, you know, he's an engineer for many years at 3M. He's got all kinds of knowledge about all kinds of things. He could, he could tell people stuff. He could be a teacher of something. Okay, last little leaf over here. So thank you for being an outlet for me, you guys. <laughs> being somebody to talk to. Uh, Okay. My oldest is still working. He's at Chick-fil-A. So he's needing to be picked up because his car blew up. So. <clears throat> My, um, my operators in the background are changing, switching posts. <laughs> all right, so I have all the, the green, the first layer of green down, okay? While we still have green on our brushes, let's go in and you'll see that there's green all in these, this little area here. See how that is? So we're gonna go from along this little ridge here and go up through, up into part of this, um, this petal and out into this part of the petal. As well, each of these um, petals has a very thin green line. We'll just add a little tiny line on the rest of those. Okay, so we're gonna go in with that same green. Still have green on our, our uh, brushes and just very lightly like with the lightest of touch we're going to go in and start pulling a little bit of color up into this area just like that light as can be you don't want to have big brash lines these are super delicate lines just to have a definite space there. All right, and this can come out into this area as well. I just wanna show that that's the deepest part of that flower. Now I'm going to go along that middle line just as lightly as can be. Super, super light. And all the way up there through here. Okay. Light as can be. I'm aware of what every time I touch my face these days. <laughs> the fan is blowing little hairs touching my face and making them itchy. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, this is probably pretty dry. Let's go in and put a little bit more color on the rest of these leaves. You can see that they 
They are dark, but see how they have a little more definition on the my finished one? We'll go ahead and just get some a little bit more defined lines in there. So especially at the joints where the leaves come together with the stalk, we want to have that be a little bit darker and just along the bottoms. Okay, and we want to make sure that that all blends in. Okay. All along there. Okay. A little bit, maybe we'll put a little bit of yellow on these leaves just to warm them up. But at this point, there's just a lot of defining to do. So just go in and add the darkness along the bottoms and along the side. I think this is maybe the first year in history that <laughs> we haven't gone to church on sun on an Easter Sunday. It feels really weird to celebrate at home. But you know what? Truth is celebration is still the celebration, right? It's about the people who are interacting with the story of Jesus, right? So, we'll be fine. This feels weird. Usually we do music, it's a busy time of year, you know? No, not this year. Okay, continuing down, like I said, this is this little area here, I'd make a whole rounded area there. Just see, show where it goes into that, into that leaf. Okay, and it can be really dark along this outside edge. Give it a de good definition of color there. here along that outside edge and on the bottom of the leaf. There'd probably be a shadow under this leaf here. Maybe bring that down. There we go. And I'm going to make a nice dark line all along this edge here. Just nice and defined. No comparison, no angry talk to yourself as you're doing this. If you wouldn't say it to someone else, don't say it to yourself, right? We're all very aware of like what our thoughts are and how, how we would want these things to go. You know, sometimes you have control of things and sometimes you don't. And everybody has to be okay with being a beginner, right? That's how you become more, of, more than a beginner is being a beginner all the way, asking the questions, trying and failing, right? And then trying and succeeding. All right. And then at some point, you have to just say, that's good enough. Okay. <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. Good enough. 
Okay. We're going to let that dry and we're going to go in with the purple now. Okay, so I found that I wanted to use this dark kind of bluish purple here and I wet it down so much it's almost just water with a tinge of purple to it. Okay, just add water until it's, it's almost hardly shows. And you can do a little bit of a test on your other paper to see uh, how, how potent the paint is in your water. Okay, but once you get it to be just a tinge of purple, we're gonna go in, especially right here, this is the darkest part of the flower. It's underneath these petals, right? And we're just gonna go in, leave some white spaces, just let it be flowing around in that little area, and then come up around here to show some of that shape. And then over here, this would have a shadow as well. All right? So we'll put some purple right under here to show that that's under there, under that petal. This little area is the most shadowed and blend it all in. It does not need to be a big purple flower, right? We're just showing this we're using purple as a, as a shadow agent, right? To make shadows. So we'll just leave it at that and see how it dries. Okay, we're not washing our brush. We still have a little bit of purple on our brush. And we're gonna go through these petals and just kind of pull the, the little barely there purple up from the bottom and up to the top just so that it shows a little bit of a um, texture to that petal. Okay. Continuing just the hint, the, just the slightest hint of purple. Pulling up from the bottom up to the, to the tip. You don't want to end your line here. You want to go all the way to the tip. Okay. All right. Now there would be shadow where these two join, right? So we're going to add a little bit more paint and put that darker right in that crease there. Just barely there, right? And use your water to spread it out and wick it up if you need to. I put a little too much. I'm going to wick it up a little bit into my brush and let that be shadowed right there. Okay. Still hardly any paint on my brush and I'm going from the tip down to the to the pistols there barely barely any paint on the brush okay when you're looking at this painting you hardly see that there's even any color right it looks it looks white but in order for it to have some shape, you have to have a little bit of it, a little bit of that color in there. Okay, there would be shadow right there. So we're going in with a little bit more purple than I had on my brush previously. And going in just in that area there, just where the, the joints are, where it would meet, yeah. Okay, and this little part is the darkest little area. So I am gonna go in with some good purple, go around that circle. Ooh, that's just really bright comparatively, but I think it's good. Okay, the dark little half circle. And then use my water to just fill in that little half circle, pulling the, pulling the purple down in, okay. There would be a little purple on this area as well. Shadowy area. Okay. Little curly cue there. Unfurling. We have some kind of lily. We have some house plants that have those little lilies that poke up. 
and they just kind of look like a leaf and then they go whoop, whoop, and unfurl. That's, that's fun to watch. Well, I haven't really watched it but from one day to the next, right? <laughs> okay, continuing on to this one and we're just using barely, barely any paint. Mostly water just to make that shadow. A little hint of texture to that. Okay. That is that. That's the purple. Let it dry. We might add a tiny bit more just to, to this little area so that it shows it's the darkest area. Just barely, barely, barely along that edge there. You always want to, the more you can think about where the light is and where it's not, the more realistic you're going to have your painting's going to look. Okay. All right. Now we're going to put in some, some yellow just for some highlights. So you'll see there's yellow on the tops of these leaves, just blended in with the other, the green color just to warm it up and to show that there's a little bit of shininess. And then there's yellow all in here, just coming up from the middle of this, these two um, petals, okay? Really just tiny little highlights of yellow. So we'll go in with, with the yellow. I'm gonna go on the leaves first. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow with a lot of water just to the tops of these leaves. Just warms it up, see how that works? Warms up that green a little bit and shows that it's more than one color. It's always my thing. Don't use one color. The world is not full of one color. It's kind of like using hair dye out of a box, you know, which I am very guilty of doing. But whenever I go into the, my friends, does my hair, she's like, oh girl, I've got all one color hair. That's just not how it really works. <laughs> most of the world, most of nature is full of diverse colors and shapes, not like plastic, right? Okay, just tiny bits of yellow. Brighten that up a little. Yeah. Okay. Clean my brush really well because I don't want it to have too much green. Actually, I'm going to use a small brush just for this. I don't want to have too much yellow going on in this area. So this is my zero brush if you're using numbered brushes. If not, just use a brush that has a tiny tip, okay? The smallest tip you have. And we're gonna go in with yellow along the outside edge of this, both edges. Just very lightly, not even that bright like I just did. <laughs> Wick that back up a little bit. Just a hint. Okay, and then we'll go in with yellow all down the middle here and just along in here. Okay, maybe up here like a little highlight of the edge. Okay, and then we'll do some out this way too, just to lighten up that green and show that there's Sun shining. Okay. All right. Now we have these little pistols in here. You'll see that there's little tubes for their for their stalks, and then on the top, there they have orangish color. Um, little pollen. So I'm going to go in 
with that same green that I had, I'm going to go along the bottom of the little tubes to delineate. That's the bottom of the tube. Even those are round, right? So we want to, at most, as much as we can, we want to show the 3D-ness of it, right? We want to show that there's, there's depth to these pictures. So we're going to go along the bottom edge of each of these little stalks here. This is detail work. Just go slowly and deliberately. Don't be afraid, but don't be rash at the same time. Good advice for life in general, right? <laughs> okay, so sometimes you just have to trust that your brain and your body are working together. Tell your body, tell your brain what to do, right? It's like in piano lessons. Tell your brain that you need to play these notes. Have your brain tell your body. <laughs> Eventually, muscle memory kicks in and you're able to not be so deliberate, but usually, at the beginning, you gotta tell yourself. Okay, I'm gonna go in with yellow and paint the top of those tubes, okay? That's gonna blend very much with the, the green, but at least the top part of the tube will be a little bit lighter. That's the goal. It's such a small little area that the, it will blend together to make like a light green color, but it will be lighter. So that's the goal. Okay. All right. These little guys here, there's a, there's three little um, knobbies at the top of this, this bottom tube. Those are green. So I'm just going to add some green and paint those. I'm going to paint the bottoms of them and pull the green up into the rest of them nice and loose. Okay. And we will add a little bit of white um, with our paint pens if you have them. But if you don't, this is great. Okay, and then for the little, little um, pollens, I'm going to use some orange. And again, I'm going to paint the bottom of the pollen. A nice bright orange. Okay, paint the bottom of it, just a little C shape. That way it'll look rounded. And then we'll get the paint off of our brushes and go in with an almost dry brush and kind of just pull. It's not going to be dry all the way, but it's going to be damp. You're going to pull the rest of the paint up into that pollen pod. Okay? That way it looks darker on the bottom, lighter on the top. It'll give it a rounded look. Okay? Okay. So we've got our lily. We've got our leaves painted. We've got, yeah, we're doing well, okay? At this point, I looked at it and I thought, it's nice. Um, my pencil marks weren't as dark, so it wasn't as delineated. If you have um, dark marks, it, it looks pretty clear that this is not all white paper. You know, it's not a white flower on white paper. But in order to make it stand out a little bit more, I am going to put some blue. See that light, light blue all around. So the way you do that is put all kinds of water. My water is now green. If you have, if you're home and you can go get new water, you can do that, but it's not going to hurt. We're just going to have barely, barely any paint on our brushes. So we're going to add water to the paper. This was a lot of putting water on paper, and I did have to, in the end, um, once this dried, I had to iron it because <laughs> it had got, gotten pretty crinkly. So 
just know that that's a little trick. If, you're, if your um, water has wrinkled your paper up, just put a little towel over it and iron away. Okay, so now I'm dropping the blue into this wet paint, wet uh, paper, okay? I'm just gonna go around and really, really spread that paint, like almost so you can hardly see it. If, if you want a bright blue sky, you can, but I decided just the faintest of blues would be nice. So I'm going in and adding water so that it just really disperses all around. Let it be white in some places. Okay. And really, I'm not even gonna add any more paint. I added paint up here, I'm pulling it down, and I'm gonna push it all around. Down in here. All in the spaces around the around the stock. And down in here. Water, water, mostly water. Okay. There's that. That is that. My brush lost a little hair. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now if you have a white paint pen, we'll go in and do some details. Okay. Some of the details that I chose to put in are um, some little lines on these leaves here some little lines along the top, maybe along this little guy here. And then what I did do here, I don't know if you can see, but I traced around all of the pencil marks to cover up the pencil marks. I just think that the white against this, the rest of the paint looks so much nicer. So I did uh, cover up the, all those pencil marks. So if you have a marker and you can do that, um, you can go for it. I'm not going to take the time to do it, but I did just go along like this and just color over the, the pencil marks to make it all white. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do is these have ridges you can put, especially down the middle, there were some stark ridges around that green line that we put in. Put some up in here too, just to lighten up this area. And then on the, on the pistols here, on the pollen pods, I just put a little bit of a, some dots to show that they were, they have pollen kind of coming out of them, right? So fuse it up in here, along the middle of these guys. Really just wherever you feel like you wanna add a little bit of extra detail, okay? And maybe the leaves over here. Okay, but basically that is the Easter lily. That's it. I think we did a good job today. So I hope that you have a great Easter. I hope you're able to celebrate with your family, even though it's a different kind of holiday. I know that this is a time where we can just purpose in our hearts to do it differently, but just as beautifully. So bring beauty in the world however you can. Put it in the world. Show your art. Show your beauty. Whatever you're making, whatever you've been gifted at, use it for the good of the world. Um, and I pray peace and grace and wholeness for all of your households. Have a good Easter.